right? Because what do we know so far? We know if this is the actual true value, if, we're if, we, if the null value that we assume is in fact true, we know what the sampling distribution is. We also know what estimate we actually got, okay? So what we see is that we are under the assumption that the null is true, here's what we get. If what we got is very, 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 very unlikely to occur if the null is true, well then one of these two things must be false, right? And we actually did get this estimate. That part's definitely true. So if one of them's false, it's gotta be the null. So that's our idea. We look at the null distribution, we say if the estimate we actually got is too unlikely given the null distribution, then we can reject the null because we actually did get the estimate and they can't both be true. That's our idea. So what we're going to do, we're going to characterize the null distribution, the null sampling distribution of our estimator under the assumption that the null is true, and we're going to check how unlikely our estimate is. So let's take our estimate that we had before where we're, gonna, we're testing the, the true value of 2, uh, and we actually got a 2.22. How unlikely was that to occur? Well, we would take this sampling distribution and we would see how far out in the tails our estimate is. So let's take a look at that. So here what I've done is I've taken the, tr the null distribution that we are assuming is true based on our assumed null of 2, and I've put on the, the, the graph the point 2.22, which was our estimate. I've also put on 1.78, which is the same distance away, but in the other direction. So this is a two-tailed test because I'm looking at whether uh, my, my estimate is far enough away from the null in either direction. You could also do a one-tailed test where I'm only looking in one direction. Um, and uh, uh, so if, if 2.22 is, is 0.22 above 2, well then 1.78 is 0.22 below 2, and I'm seeing whether I'm far enough away. And we're basically looking, is the estimate that we got too weird to actually believe that null distribution that we started with? Uh, and here what we see is that when I put those two lines on, roughly 26% of the sampling distribution is above my estimate, and 31% is below that 1.78. So about a little bit more than half the time, we're going to get some estimate that is as weird or weirder than the estimate we actually got under the assumption the null is true. That's pretty likely, okay? So if I could say there's more than a half chance I would get something this far away from 2, even if true, 2 is the actual true value, I'm not very likely to say, well, then two must be wrong, right? Because two could be correct, right? And there's a half chance that I would get what I got, even if two is correct. Uh, now, this lumpy particular distribution I got just from some random samples, we happen to know that as samples go to infinity, uh, then an ordinarily squares estimator is normally distributed. So we can smooth this out a little bit. Uh, and it looks like this. It doesn't change things that much here. Um, here we have 28% above that cutoff and 28 below that cutoff. When you add them up, uh, you get uh, 56 uh, percent likely to get something as weirder or weirder if the null is true. Now we can't reject that the truth is two, which is good because the truth actually is two. Uh, so we don't want to be able to reject it. Note, by the way, that by not now by not rejecting two, we're not claiming that two is in fact the truth. We're just saying that we did not have the evidence to show that it wasn't the truth. Now we couldn't reject two, but let's try testing against a different null. Let's say that we're going to test whether the the coefficient is zero or not. Why zero? Well, zero is a common thing to test your null against because if it's zero, then that means there's no relationship between the two variables. And often a question that you're interested in is, is there any relationship between the two variables? I think that's a bit, a bit silly, but you know, we sort of do what we're used to doing. So let's test it against zero. So here is the null distribution if the truth is zero. Uh, so now I can go, how, how far to the right do we need to go to get to our actual estimate of 2.22? And then on the other side to negative 2.22. Uh, and it turns out there is a very, very tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the distribution outside of that range. So it is very, very unlikely that we would have gotten an estimate as weird as 2.22 or weirder uh, if indeed the true null was zero, if the true value was zero. So it's so unlikely that both the truth is zero and that we got this estimate that they can't both be true. Or it's very, very, very unlikely that both are true. So it's probably the fact that zero, the true zero that is false, leaving us with our estimate so we can reject the null of zero. We can actually characterize this as well. Uh, this kind of brings us to the concept of a p-value. The p-value is just the total sum of the area outside of that range. Uh, and so, you know, you can see on this graph, we go back to that, true, that, that null value of 2. 56% uh, of the, air, of the uh, area of the distribution is outside of the range of our estimate. Uh, that's a very high proportion. So the, we would say that the p-value, the probability of getting our estimate or weirder, is 56%. And that's not low enough to be able to reject our null. How low does it actually need to be? Well, it's pretty arbitrary. Uh, often people will 
reject a null if it's below point, if the p-value is below 0.05 or 5%. That is completely arbitrary, not a great rule. It's not great to like say 6%, if there's not rejection, 4% there is, like that doesn't make a lot of sense, but we sort of go with it. I would recommend getting used to that concept of rejecting a null if the p-value is below a certain threshold, um, but also don't take it too seriously. Uh, and also don't get too wrapped up in whether you reject the null uh, precisely or not below a specific threshold, because it is pretty arbitrary. Keeping that in mind, let's go in a different direction to looking at the, the, the sampling distribution and the uncertainty of our estimate, which is just to characterize that sampling distribution ourselves. So instead of focusing on whether we can reject a particular null or not, let's talk about what the sampling distribution is. And this brings us to the concept of standard errors and confidence intervals. So let's look at this regression table. Uh, so what this regression table has is it has our coefficients and it also has the standard errors of those coefficients. So if we look at the, the coefficient on x here, it, the coefficient is 2.22, the standard error is 0.37. From this, I can tell you that the mean of the sampling distribution, uh, if we assume that this coefficient is, uh, is the truth, is that uh, is the mean of that sampling distribution is 2.22, uh, and that's currently our best guess as to what the truth might be. Uh, and the standard deviation of that sampling distribution is 0.37, right? The standard deviation of a sampling distribution is the standard error of the coefficient. And so from this information, because I know that this OLS coefficient is normally distributed, I already know what the sampling distribution of this coefficient is, uh, at least when I center it around the estimate that I actually got. So from here, looking at this, I already have a pretty good idea of how likely particular uh, null that or particular true values might be. Uh, a, null that, a null value of 2 is not that far off, right? If I did that exact same test, uh, centering at 2.22 and seeing if 2 is far away enough, I would get that exact same p-value of 56%, right? Um, but, uh, and beyond that, I can flexibly think about not just is a particular null rejected or not, but how likely are particular nulls, right? If we're really far away from 2.22, we might reject that null. If we're really close, then we might not reject the null like 2 as opposed to zero very far away, two very close in. We can also take this information and construct a confidence interval. A confidence interval uh, basically describes the, uh, whatever range of our distribution gets the middle 95%. So 95% of the weight of our distribution is in the center, 5% is on the tails, uh, which means that we could reject any nulls that are outside of our confidence interval. For a standard 95% confidence interval with a normal null distribution, uh, that is going to be whatever our coefficient estimate is, plus or minus the standard error times something that's going to sort of scale us to the standard normal, uh, which would be the number 1.96 for a 95% confidence interval. It looks like this. Uh, so with the, cent the center of our sampling distribution at the estimate that we actually got, we go the same value above and below until we get 2.5% in each of the tails for a total of 5%. And so if you said, hey, can you reject a particular null? I could tell you immediately looking at this, I can reject zero because it's outside of that 95% range. I can reject one or I can reject three because those are both outside of my 95% range. I could not reject 2.5 because that is inside the 95% range right there. All right, uh, this probably went a little bit longer than it needed to, but I think what we covered and, and what I think I uh, hope got across here is the concept of characterizing a sampling distribution of an estimate that's what we want to do. We want to acknowledge that there's some randomness inherent in taking some data and trying to infer something about a true population value from that. There's going to be some noise. We need to characterize that noise by thinking about the standard error of our distribution. Uh, we also want to uh, think about what values are very unlikely to be true given that sampling distribution. And we can either think about that as a null hypothesis significance test by picking a value and seeing if it is if the if, if we assume that value is true would our actual value be too far away to believe that? And then we can reject the null if it's too far away. Or we can center our sampling distribution around our estimate itself and see what sort of true values we can reject uh, as being too far away from the estimate that we got, such that uh, if we assume that that was a true value, our estimate would be too unlikely to believe. All right, that's the basics of it. Uh, next time I'll talk a little bit about um, how to calculate T-scores and Z-scores and actually do this stuff and how to do it in R. Thank you.